uh, my regular guest and good friend, Stephen Yates, who is a foreign policy expert. He watches everything that's happening. We've been talking about Australia with AUKUS and he's not a big, he's not a big AUKUS. He hates AUKUS. I don't want to say he's a bit, he hates it with the burning passion of a thousand sons. Uh, he's previously advised on all of this, all of the foreign policy uh, with previous uh, former VP Dick Cheney in the Bush administration. He joins us now. And of course, he also ran Radio Free Asia before the commies. Uh, were terrified of him. They didn't like him, so they wanted him out. Stephen, first off, I wanted to, I just wanted to get your, your reaction to Australia being so statist with some of this stuff. And then I want to talk about the, the big, the largest incursion into Taiwanese airspace by China just within the past four days. What is it, like 20? So, oh, no, 149 aircraft inside their defense zone. So we're going to talk about that. But I got to get your reaction to Australia going door to door here, asking people if they're going to protest. I, I do have second thoughts about partnering with them. Well, it's just breathtaking because it is so at odds with everything anyone has ever known about Australia for seemingly ever. And uh, it is chilling, I think is an overused word, but it really is very chilling. It seems to be sort of the basis of pre-crime in a certain movie where people are going and saying, hey, are you thinking about doing something that we might want to punish you for, even though it might not be illegal? And it's just shocking, is yeah. I think the only way you could really put it. And uh, it really does show that so it's not just the United States. A lot of the world took a very poisonous orange pill for like, like four years, and it made all normal brain functions stop. And they began to only operate under the mode of kill or be killed, control or fight or something like that. And this is a very, very dystopian reality. It was, and it came on really fast, really fast. Very uh, fast. So, and we've all been worried about the foundations of freedom, liberty, constitutionalism in the United States. We've had lots of crises, but to watch Australia go to these depths under an allegedly center-right government, I might add, yeah, which is, is weird. breathtaking. Yeah, they because you had Malcolm Turnbull previously, and I mean they they've been. They were not lefties, like in the general sense. I mean, I, I feel like every other government, even if they say that they're more conservative than that, which identifies as conservative in the U.S., they're still, to us, they seem a little lefty. But they're, they, I mean, you're right. They were not progressives or Marxists by any measure of the word. No, they did do a couple of things that would be pre-revolutionary in America, like the Man. big gun grab. Yeah, that was bad. Uh, and so the Australians have shown a propensity uh, to remind us that they're not Americans. At yeah. the same time, you're watching a lot of Australians organize and break through barriers, push through police to try to exercise their freedom. Uh, I think we're starting to see in some parts of the world that have gone past the breaking point. People just aren't going to be able to put up with it much longer. It's, it's, it's pretty unbelievable, especially considering everything that's happening. You would think that this is the time that you wouldn't want to lock your country down, that you wouldn't want to ruin your country's economy and we're going to talk about that here in a little bit but i i got to get your your response on what's been happening over the past four days between china and taiwan uh their air force chinese uh, the communist party of china i can't just just simply say china i always have it's it's appropriate to always identify the communists they've flown 149 aircraft inside of taiwan's air defense zone 56 on monday largest incursion ever three dozen fighter jets a dozen bombers, and that's today. Uh, the first wave was Friday, and so this was all happening over the weekend going into today. Of course, they're in a very different time zone. And, of course, today's the new day that J Japan's prime minister, new prime minister, takes office. Is Talk to me about this because they're getting more and more brazen. And I think, to me, it seems like they're trying to test the limits of, of their uh, rabble-rousing and, and see at what point will the United States actually do more than just issue some sort of missive statement in response. Well, so far, that's all we've done. Yeah. And so it's not irrational for aggressive, racist, expansionist authoritarians to go ahead and keep pushing. And that's what the Chinese Communist Party is. It's aggressive, it's racist, it's expansionist, it's authoritarian, and it's pushing for its advantage. This was coincident with their national day. So what do racist nationalists do? They go out and they play with big hardware and try to oppress innocent free people. And so that's that's what's happening in the Taiwan Straits. We have gone through a lot of political warfare in the mm -hmm. in the Taiwan Straits, 
uh, the Chinese Communist Party under Xi Jinping has been much more aggressive worldwide in other forms of political warfare, ranging from Confucius Institutes that were sort of soft power politics to really hard arm twisting, knuckle breaking kind of stuff like we're going to hold a couple of innocent Canadians hostage for a few years until you give us our corrupt princess back right. kind of political warfare. And so that's this is what the Chinese communists are doing. And so this is linked actually to the Australia story and what's going on with us. It's the same bad guy in the world that's been out there destroying your economy, wrecking your brain cells, making you punish yourself while they go about expanding authoritarianism out into the world. And I just feel like it's past time to sort of pull the shades back and say, whoa, this is the pe these are the people that imposed all these costs. We shouldn't be having any debate about spending trillions of tax dollars taken from Americans to solve a problem that the Chinese communists caused. What is What are our defenders and our allies doing to extract that pound of flesh out of China? We've got to get serious about that. Very serious about it. And the serious talk also coming from Taiwan's foreign minister. He says that his nation's preparing for war. Now, he didn't outright ask Australia to come and help them, but it was definitely intimated in his remarks that he that he that he shared. Uh, and this was after all of the aircraft were, were flying through. He spoke. Uh, Taiwan's foreign minister, Joseph Wu, declared that if PLA were to launch a strike, they would be ready to repel it. He told this to ABC's China Tonight program uh, and said that they I mean, said that they're 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 officially, I guess, prepared parent which it seems like they would always kind of have hap have to be prepared yeah. because it's not like this talk from China is recent now the increased uh incursion into airspace definitely is is this I I I feel like just every development like this is just a little bit more incrementally bit by bit closer to open warfare well we're definitely in a cold war whether we know it or like it or not uh, and I think China is pushing lines that could trip into hot war. I think they would like it if it broke out with Taiwan because they think they've built the foundation of doubt in a lot of uh, national leaders and establishment media, establishment universities, establishment politicians and say, oh, no, no, you don't want to get into a, a war far, far away just because some annoying 23, 24 million freedom loving people want to stay free and pop off about their quote unquote politics. You don't want to die for their politics. And of course, I don't. I don't want other people to die for it. But the aggressor is the CCP. They're pushing very, very hard on this. Joseph Wu is a friend. I've known him for 30 years. Uh, and it's true, he shouldn't have to say these kinds of things, but there's a lot of sort of nattering nabobs out in think tank world that say, oh no, the Taiwanese are not prepared to fight. They can't, we can't risk helping those who won't help themselves. And what Joseph is trying to say is, hello world, we're, we're ready to do all we can, but we're just 24 million people against 1.3 billion, and we kind of love you to help a brother out at the moment. Yeah, and it's not just so much helping them out. Gosh, can you imagine the emboldening of China if they were to successfully right. take over Taiwan? I don't think people realize the importance of that or the significance of that action. If they love having a smartphone, they do not want Taiwan to follow in, fall into CCP control. And that it's, is... Yeah the weakest point in the global supply chain. That's, and I almost hate measuring it like that because I, 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 I look at wherever freedom is encroached upon, wherever freedom is eliminated, it just seems like it brings it that much closer to our doorstep. I mean, I'm against nation building. I'm against all of that. War is the last resort. But at the same time, I loathe communists. My goal in life is to get banned by China. I <laughs> would love it. I would, I would have it inscribed on my tombstone. I, you may I mean, have already been shadow banned by them by having a few rogue people on your show. Uh, well, see, I know some people <laughs> I know, like uh, some guy who's Kane. His name rhymes with Schmeven Mates. Right. Yes, <laughs> I'd say exactly. So let me ask you this, because th this this also ties into one of these other stories that we're watching: this global supply chain and the uh, the interruption that I've, that really that we're all kind of dealing with because of the, the port issue in and around the United States and uh, Costco's hiring all kinds of uh, uh, cargo ships to get around it. But still, it's, you know, you have too few people. It's a labor issue. We could talk about the domestic policies that play into it. However, to me, I'm looking at some of the silver lining in here thinking this is an amazing time to try to uh, wean ourselves off of the supply of 
cheap products from communist China. I don't know if everyone's yeah. going to take advantage of that, but I, I actually, I hope that it, I really hope that the supply crunch, I hope that it just makes people rethink that if there's any bright thing that could happen out of it. I totally agree. I, I think unfortunately for us, it requires rational thought. And my experience over the last two years is that's in a, a terrifyingly low supply right now. And so I hope that people would take this as an important signal because it's all related. There were port problems. It turns out that when you have organized labor together with China pulling some political strings every once in a while and some left coast governors that are not necessarily the brightest bulbs when it comes to logistics for normal life, we're, we're, we, as a nation, we're dependent on that Pacific coast. Mm. And it doesn't exactly have a pro-efficiency, pro-business, pro-capital mindset that plays into all this we pay a cost for that in some ways we'd be better off importing from mexico than we would going through ports on america's west coast and i hate to say that no but you're right though i mean i, I completely agree and this is also one of those those issues where all of his uh, looking at gavin newsom all of his ridiculous statewide policies especially as it relates to how they're responding to the pandemic that's where now we're all affected which i feel like we should yep. get a say if you're a port state and you I, I feel like we should kind of maybe get a say if you're trying to lock everything down we should have input in that especially now i mean i just i we should use this time to be as self-sufficient to move towards self-sufficiency as much as possible i don't know i had Stephen, I, I put my tinfoil hat on earlier, and I feel like <laughs> I feel like I got to just keep doing it because I got a little strap here. Actually, I'm just going to lie and say that's the ground wire. Uh, but <laughs> I I I really feel like I got to put. I have to wear my tinfoil hat anymore because I just I see too many things that are related, and I think yeah, I just feel like we're just like going to hell in a handbasket. I don't know if we're going to be able to stop it if the momentum's too great. I'll give you a final word on this as we end this insane Monday. I've tried to resist that same impulse for a long time. I used to be a very boring voice of sanity, and now I'm just a boring voice of conspiracy, I guess. Uh, so it's just it's it, there is a lot of bad things going on in the world. It's always been thus to a degree, but I don't think there's been ever anything in the history of mankind quite like what China unleashed with COVID. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the health part. It's what it did in taking control of the minds of government and leading institutions to start hurting themselves. It is a more powerful weapon than any nuclear technology ever devised. It keeps people living, but they're not really alive. That's terrifying to me. Yeah, I think it was on purpose. I can't. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to lie. Occam's razor. If it got to put the hat back on, but I'm right there with you. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I don't even really need the hat. I mean, it just I, I think it was I done know. on purpose. And uh, that's just the way that's all there is to it. I can get a free pass because I'm wearing this hat. And sadly, it worked. It did. Yeah. Stephen Yates, always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much. Good to see you. We're going to send you one, too. We'll get you a hat, too. Awesome. Wear it in your in your bunker. Take care, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. Take care. <laughs>